Welcome everyone to the latest edition of the Sight Screen Cricket Journal podcast. I'm your host, Tohid Qureshi, and today we're going to be talking everything about Bangladesh Premier League. It started just a few days ago, where uh, I think four day, uh, sorry, four games into the tournament, so right at the start of the tournament. Lots of uh, good action to look forward to, hopefully, and to discuss the BPL and indeed his experience of it so far. I've got a fantastic guest. He's actually playing out there at the moment, which is uh, uh, fantastic, and it's great that he can join us. He has played for Warwickshire. Well, he does represent Warwickshire, actually. I don't know why I'm using the past tense. He is definitely a Warwickshire player and uh, indeed a Southern Brave uh, 100 winner um, he is Jake Lintot. Welcome, Jake. Hi, uh, yeah. Thanks for having me on. It's great, great to have you on. I mean, I'm particularly excited that you're that you're on because you know the BPL has just started. I feel there's a bit of a a buzz of excitement and anticipation, certainly amongst you know Bangladesh cricket followers out there. There's quite a few of us in the UK. Um, so yeah, there's there's a bit of a buzz out there at the moment, and it's great to to have you on to try to uh, sort of uh, see see engage exactly what's what's kind of going on out there. So so th thanks for taking the time out. No problem at all. I haven't got a lot on at the moment. I'm stuck in, cooped up in a hotel. So um, yeah, more than happy to help, and it should be good. Brilliant. Yeah. So, I mean, first off, like you said, you're you're kind of cooped up in a in a downtown Dhaka hotel. You've been in the city, I'm guessing, for for what, like a week or two now. I mean, uh, how's the experience been so far? Yeah, it's been really good. I've I've loved every second of it so far. It's um, it's obviously a very different place to come to. Um, I'd heard sort of mixed things about Bangladesh prior to coming, and that's. That it can be quite difficult in terms of touring but um obviously it's got its challenges and there's a few things that are obviously a bit alien to us english when we get out here but i'm just trying to soak it up enjoy it um it's sort of been really you know really refreshing to see people so passionate about cricket um and you know there's a real you can sense a real buzz around the, the capital when we're going to and from training and um we're, we're going up going in our police escort and everyone's sort of you know waving at the bus and it, it, it's a real good atmosphere and it's just it is a shame obviously the fans can't be in the ground um which is a big disappointment but um there's definitely a lot of interest and i'm really happy to be a part of it yeah i think you know that's that's kind of a great attitude to have i think when you know for anyone i would say visiting to visiting bangladesh is just to try to embrace it and kind of make the most of the uh, the uh, you know the experiences that you have out there and yeah i totally get how you know a lot of those experiences can seem alien um to to someone who's who's just come come or you know flown out there from the uk i mean i've got lots of family and friends out there i go there quite regularly but you know there's lots of sights and sounds and smells that still astound me when i'm out there and i'm sure uh, the same uh, is the case for you i mean did you have any particular expectations of the place when you know when uh, when you were flying out had you spoken to anyone who'd been out there before well i i had yeah i i had a fair a fair idea about things but and I also was really lucky when I was sort of 23, 24, I lived in Colombo for four months. So um, I, had a, I had an idea of the way of life and how things are. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's really grounding, obviously, for me coming out here, you know, we're pretty privileged to be in a position playing a sport that we love doing and traveling the world and getting to see all different parts of it. And I think it doesn't really matter where you are. It's everything's a pretty good experience. And yeah, just, the, like the the overriding factor for me is just the sheer passion for cricket and um you know cricket's a real religion here and and it's you know to be playing in a tournament where it's loved by so many people is is obviously a great privilege so yeah it's a it's pretty pretty good opportunity for me yeah it definitely definitely is a, a passion and a bit of a religion out there like you say and i think that must be well i know that is a big contrast to to kind of how cricket's perceived back here in the uk where you know, let's face it, it, it can be a bit invisible at, at times. So, yeah, being being out there in the middle of it, in the thick of it, must be a, a, a thrilling experience, I'm sure. Um, so, yeah, just going back to, um, you know, your involvement in the BPL, just, yeah, wondering how it all came about in terms of you being picked up by the uh, Borussia 
or Fortune Barrowshop franchise. Yeah, so it's been a bit. It has been a bit of a frustrating winter. I'd uh, I, I'd plan to try and get myself in the door in a few a few other tournaments in terms of um, T10 and potentially Sri Lanka, um, and then obviously the PSL and BPL draft coincide with each other. So was this was sort of my last opportunity to try and get a, a winter franchise tournament. So um, yeah, I, I guess I had wind of it around Christmas time. Um, Shakib had been in touch with my agent and um, had made it known that he was really interested in having me on board and um yeah it sort of came into place a couple of weeks ago three weeks ago now where we just started moving forward with it and yeah it's really exciting um obviously we've, we've got a pretty pretty strong strong group i think um spent a bit of time with the lads now and seen them train and we've got a lot of local local talent that's pretty impressive um some young guys coming through and and obviously a captain in shakib who you know is is god over here um it's brilliant to see someone uh you know so well respected and and he's very good with it he's humble and you know really accepting of the bangladeshi public which is which is unbelievable and and then we've got a, a really good mix of overseas players that sort of cover all bases and Dwayne bravo um with the bat and ball and alzari joseph giving us some pace and chris gales arrived um arrived today so yeah we've got yeah, we've got a good squad and it should be a good tournament. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's good to know. We were talking just off air uh, a few moments ago that Chris Gale is in the building somewhere. I understand, yeah, he, he landed just a few hours ago. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I know there is quite a strong, uh, like you say, West Indies uh, contingent connection within uh, within Fortune Barashar, which, uh, and, yeah, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that. But just going back to, to Shakib, I mean, that must have been fantastically flattering that someone of the stature of Shakib's actually got in touch with you personally or via your agent uh, to try to uh, get you over here. Yeah, well, I think with all with all these tournaments, obviously, um, you're you're pretty reliant on your agent pushing your case. And he he he's um, Shakib had obviously seen what I'd been doing in the hundred and CPL and um, sort of give give them a different option. Really, there's not a huge amount of risk spin out here, so. Um, having having that as is is good for them. So um, yeah, no, it was obviously great to be in touch with him, and he's been brilliant since I got here. Very welcoming, um, really nice guy, quite funny, um, quirky, and um, yeah, he's been good around the group. What's noticeable is how good he is with everyone, um, and how everyone seems to be, you know, pulling in the right direction. And yeah. I'm excited for the next coming upcoming games. That's that's really great to hear in terms of just yeah you enjoying his quirkiness and uh, just yeah just being around someone even though he is like you say um, he's got such a huge stature in Bangladesh. I'm sure you've seen his face plastered across billboards. He's almost on every other ad on on sort of TV commercial breaks. But yeah, to to see yeah, him sort I've, of I've um I've I've sat. I've sat behind him on the coach a couple of times uh, to and from the ground. And that's, that was sort of a moment where I realized that, you know, how much cricket is loved over here. And, um, you know, as soon as people see, he's recognized by every single person. Like it's, it's incredible. Whereas if you think in England, you know, I reckon 2% of people in England know who Joe Root is. It's um, yeah. the difference is, is staggering. So um, it's really good to see, and obviously those fans getting really excited. But he's still got that time of day to wave back and and give back to them. So yeah, it's been great, and yeah, been, been enjoying being around him. Brilliant. And um, actually, I've got a bit of a plea, a personal plea, or on behalf of a plea on behalf of all Bangladesh cricket fans in the UK. So you may or may not be aware there is quite a large British Bangladeshi uh, population here in the UK passionate about Bangladesh cricket. We don't actually get to see our Bangladesh heroes up close in person all that often in the UK. So a personal plea to, to you to ask Shakib to play in the hundred. Do you reckon he could get, <laughs> could he get a gig at the Southern Brave? Maybe he might be, he might be too expensive. Um, <laughs> But um, we'll, we'll see. I'll have a word with him. I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of people have mentioned the hundred to me, and um, I think the problem with the hundred at the moment is just in terms of overseas allocation is quite low. Um, we're seeing in lots of tournaments around the world that you know the IPL is eight 
I think the CPL is six, here is six, um, whereas the 100 is only three. So it's it's quite tough for those international players to, yeah. to get opportunities to come over and play in the 100. But I'm sure he would add a huge amount of value to any team. Um, he's exceptional in all facets of the game, isn't he? So. Indeed, yeah. And I mean, in all seriousness, I think not only from you know the, the 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 value that he brings from a playing point of view i think he would bring a huge new market to to the game to the hundred and you know let's face it i think part of the hundred is all about bringing a new audience and you know if you want to tap into that sort of british bangladeshi cricket fan base then yeah that that would be a surefire way of doing it um but yeah great great that you'll pass that on by the way thank you thank you for that um so yeah, just let's let's talk about Fortune Borishal uh, in a, in a bit more sort of depth. I mean, how easy was it for you to kind of almost go in from the cold, quite literally, from the cold UK, and and kind of integrate, I guess, with with the rest of the team, with the rest of the squad. Yeah, I think obviously when you people don't really see the the difficulty around, you know, there's language barriers, there's uh, culture differences um we're obviously i'm not used to being in this sort of country so it's filled with loads of challenges but i think all those challenges you know a brilliant learning you know it's brilliant for me to learn um i've i've been i've tried to be as you know chatty and friendly and sort of op have open arms with all everyone really and engage in conversation as much as possible it might take that a little bit longer in terms of having conversation but i think it goes a long way to, to sort of engage and, and chat. So, yeah, I've been getting involved with the group. Um, they've been really welcoming, really friendly guys. Um, I've had good chats with the, the coaching staff. And, yeah, everyone's really supportive and they've been really welcoming, which obviously when you're coming to a new country that, and you don't speak the language, and that's really important. So as an overseas player, you to feel welcomed is, is key. So, yeah, I feel, feel comfortable and ready to perform, really. Great, yeah, and you know, as as we've already said, I think you're under or in very capable hands with Shakib um, as captain. Also, you've got very experienced Khalid uh, Khalid Mahmood, who's um, uh, yeah, team is he team coach or team manager? He's, yeah, he's certainly head, the head, setup coach, head coach, yeah. head coach, and I mean, he's a hugely. If you didn't know before, I'm sure you do now. He's a hugely experienced figure in Bangladesh cricket. He's he's got all sorts of roles so yeah another good man to be uh, uh involved with i would say um so yeah you talked about the uh the the squad that you've got there and um yeah just the, the sort of the balance of the squad uh let's talk about that in a bit more depth i mean you know there's there's no getting away i suppose from the two massive icons in the team so you've got the biggest icon in bangladesh playing in the team shakib and then You've got the biggest icon possibly in all of T20 cricket in uh, Chris Gale. Um, yeah, I mean, how how good is that for someone like you to, to be involved in a, in a team with those two? Yeah, like I said earlier, I'm extremely privileged to be in a position now. I think it's helped coming into the game that bit later. I've got an understanding of, you know, some perspective on life and understand how good this opportunity is. Um, and yeah, I just throw myself into it, really. I'm trying to learn from those guys, but also just trying to enjoy their company and see how they go about their business. Um, I think we can sometimes, you know, put too I think the way that those guys play, Chris and Dwayne in particular, and even Shaqib, they play with so much calmness and they're very relaxed and confident in themselves to execute their skills. And I think that's a really key part of it for me, I think. You know, it, it's it's a game we want to have fun playing T Twenty cricket. Ultimately, that's what it's about, and those three people sort of epitomise that. I think when you see them on the field, so um, yeah, learning lots and just yeah, really privileged to have the opportunity to learn from those guys. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's great to hear that it's it's you know uh, a learning experience for you. And I'm just wondering as well. You know, you were sort of mentioning that there's a you know a good batch of sort of young local players as well in the squad do you think as well that there's a bit of a sort of a learning experience maybe for them in terms of learning from you maybe you know the the, the sort of way that the professional way that you approach the game and you know just looking at the way that you sort of go about your business 
Yeah, I think so. I'm I'm trying to help everyone as much as possible, and they're trying to help me. And I think that's ultimately what it comes down to at the end of the day. If if teams are successful, everyone's got to be pulling in the same direction. So, um, yeah, I imagine they're learning a huge amount. Um, they all seem very driven, and they're working hard. And um, yeah, it's been it's been great so far. Good, good to hear that. There's that sort of two way uh, experience going on because I, you know, I guess. You know, when when you think about sort of T20 franchise cricket, that is the way I think it should it should be played in terms of you know the way that teams come together, people learning new skills from one another. I think that's the uh, the utopian vision for it anyway. So yeah, good to good to hear that it's uh, that it's all happening. So let's turn maybe to um, sort of some of the other England players or English players. Who are who are out there at the moment competing uh, uh, for different teams? So you actually played against uh, two two England players, or sorry, English players in Will Jackson and Benny Howes in the very first game of the tournament. I mean, first of all, how how kind of how was it in terms of being involved in the very first game uh, of of the tournament? Yeah, I was pretty nervous. Um, it was. Um... Yeah, I'm pretty nervous, but settled into it quite quickly. Um, I don't, I don't know Will uh, that well. I've played against him a few times uh, in the hundred, a couple of times in the hundred, and then uh, I always, I know Benny quite well from when I was at Gloucester, and yeah. So I, it's there's not huge amount of English people playing in the BPL this year. Most of them have gone to the PSL. Um, so yeah, it was nice to see some familiar faces. Um, it's also quite, you know, it's interesting having gone to the Caribbean, played in 100, and then coming here, the amount of people you cross paths with along the way and you start, you know, developing relationships with people that you'd never met before in terms, like, at the, you know, I turned up at the airport and Ravi Bapara was there and I knew Ravi from the CPL. I hadn't met him really before then and it, it becomes quite a close-knit network and everyone sort of ends up going similar places and I uh, saw Faf Duplessis this morning at breakfast. I'd caught up with him quite a fair bit in the um, in the in the Caribbean. So yeah, it's it's just a really it's a great atmosphere. And obviously with COVID at the moment, all teams are in hotels and there's not a lot else to do really other than enjoy each other's company. So um, yeah, no, the first game was good and um, yeah, looking forward. To, I think we've got Dhaka tomorrow, um, so have to try and uh, get out Dre Russ. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, he got out to a well, a very freakish dismissal in that first game, didn't he? And uh, yeah, his his catching wasn't too great the other day either. But um, yeah, good. Well, best of luck in that game. I mean, just in terms of the other sort of uh, English players in the competition, is there a bit of a I don't know how does it work? Do you have a WhatsApp group? Do you kind of try and keep in touch with one another? And how are you sort of getting on? not hugely um we haven't got a whatsapp group um but you know when we see each other we're always chatting and catching up and um yeah it's, it's obviously nice to see see other people but at the same time just trying to fully get stuck into um spending time with the locals and and getting involved in the culture here so um yeah, i've got plenty of time to chat to english lads when i'm home Absolutely, yeah. I, I think the same. It's like when you go on holiday, why would you want to uh, hang out with uh, people from England? You know, you want to get stuck yeah. into the local, uh, the local cuisine and all the rest of it. Uh, just on that, have you have you tried any of the uh, sort of local delicacies, the local dishes? I mean, well, I've of, made a lots... I've made a couple of mistakes early on by not, um, you know, stressing amount of spice um, oh. that that caught me out uh first couple of days and now i've sort of just stayed away from any dishes that have any sort of spice in really just because it is so spicy um i asked for i had like a szechuan chicken on the third night and i said like i said to the guy on the phone i was like yeah. come on i just want a small amount of spice and it still took the roof of my mouth <laughs> off so, um yeah that's yeah. that's obviously one of the challenges so i'm sticking with my i think at the moment i've got a go to a couple of go-to dishes on the menu in the room service so yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, I think small amount of spice isn't like in the vocabulary, in the, isn't in Not the Bangladeshi really. vocabulary. It no. doesn't doesn't actually translate. But uh, I like the Szechuan chicken. Yeah, that's a good choice because actually, what what you might 
realize is that there's a bit of a fusion. There's like this kind of Bangladeshi Chinese kind of fusion thing going on. That, yeah, very yeah. very tasty um, when it's when it's not too too spiced. <laughs> um, just going back to the the sort of the uh, the England thing, I guess, um, or the the thing about English players in the BPL, there has actually in previous years been a good number of uh, sort of England players who have who have kind of turned out in the BPL. I remember actually in the last edition, I was I was over there at the end of 2019, at the start of 2020 for the last edition, and uh, well, Ravi Bopara was there again, and uh, actually on the coaching side, there was lots of English representation. I know. Paul Nixon's back there this time again with uh, Chuzzle Graham Challengers as uh, sort of on the coaching side of that. Uh, James Foster was involved in that last edition. Always Shah as well on the coaching side. So, yeah, I feel there's always been a decent amount of kind of English representation um, at the BPL. I mean, is that is that... I don't know, coming from England and, you know, for, on the county circuit, do you feel that... Um, Bangladesh and the BPL is kind of on people's to-do list? I think um, this year was difficult in that it was organised quite late. Mm -hmm. um, so by all accounts, um, they missed out on a lot of overseas players due to signing, you know, with, in the PSL. Um, so probably just, yeah, need to be a bit more organised on that front next year. And I think that will have a big impact. It's obviously... Um, you know, it's a brilliant tournament, and historically, it's 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 always been something that I've kept my eye on, um, both here and in Pakistan. Um, they tend to be pretty, you know, both very good competition. So, um, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's been good, and I think it, it definitely is on players' radars. I know that players, a lot of players back home, would love to be out here and and get an opportunity to play in on the franchise circuit. So, yeah, it's definitely something that. I think will happen more and more moving forward. That's that's good to know. And I, I gather this year there is a bit of an overlap in terms of the scheduling with the PSL and the BPL. And I'm, yeah, perhaps that's why there, you know, there's there's a bit of a split between England players who are, who are over at the PSL and people like you in the BPL. So yeah, maybe maybe that's kind of influenced things this time around. Um, so yeah, just just looking ahead to the tournament itself, it's quite a short, sharp kind of four weeks, games that are coming thick and fast. So like we were saying, you were involved in that first game. Uh, you've had a couple of days of kind of uh, with, with no games and then you're playing Ducker tomorrow. Um, is it is it quite difficult from a playing point of view to kind of process kind of games that have just taken place and prepare for the next game when there's sort of so many games in such a small uh, space of time? Uh, personally, no, I, I don't find it an issue at all. Um, I actually, I actually like the fact that the tournament is played in a four-week block, and I think certain cricket boards could probably learn from that. Um, <laughs> I think it's a it's a brilliant way of doing things, and yeah, um, I think it allows people to focus all of their time on one thing, um, play against one coloured ball, and um, just really give everything to that tournament. Um, in a in a you know ten games in in twenty eight days from a T twenty cricket perspective, and we're looking at sort of three hours, three three and a half hours of you know activity. I don't I don't see it as a huge issue, and I think I think it works really well. It just sort of, if you get on a roll, it can be it can be brilliant. Obviously, it can go the other way if you start losing. But the great thing about having games thick and fast is whatever happens, there's always a game coming. Um, and for me, I. I'm quite big on, you know, finding I'm quite, I like being in a rhythm. So I struggled a little bit for rhythm in the first game. And I feel like the more and more I play, the better I'm going to get. Um, that was obviously my first game for four, four, four months or so. So it, it was a little bit rusty, but I think that's what these tournaments allow you to do. You know, you know, it's, you can gain so much momentum. Absolutely. I mean, I was watching that first game the other the other morning. It's kind of seven thirty a.m. starts here back in the UK, and uh, yeah, you didn't look rusty, by the way. I thought it, you know it's a very tidy middle overs kind of uh, spell, the sort of thing that we've come to expect from you. So uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure, like you say, you can only uh, improve as a as a tournament uh, goes on. Um, just in terms of yeah, sort of preparation. I know 
you have spoken in the past about how you like to really sort of dig into the sort of data and the analysis side of things when you prepare for games. Um, how easy is that to do sort of at the BPL? I mean, is there a team analyst? Is, it, is there the same amount of kind of um, analysis that goes on, for example, compared to the 100? Yeah, we've had all the videos through this evening um, of, of batters um, for tomorrow. Um, just... Yeah, so I'll spend, you know, probably an hour in the morning, hour and a half in the morning, just looking at all that, um, going through, just looking at how I can. I think the key things for me as a ball, as a, as a spinner and the type of bowler I am, I, I sort of pride myself on my economy. I think I'm, I'm pretty economical. So, and I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that I am always planning ways of stopping boundaries. That's something that I'm really big on and I try and find you know how I can get hit for one rather than you know how I can necessarily take a wicket I think wickets come through through pressure and if I can tie batters down and make it difficult for them to score I think you end up reaping the rewards either I do or someone else does um, we saw the other day in the first game me and Shakib only went you know went for sort of 20 run 25 runs between us and that meant that, you know, um, Alzari picked up three for, and it, it doesn't, you know, you're not always going to get wickets, but I think the planning side of things for me, for me personally is, is really huge. I, I just think you, we've got all this access to footage and data and it, it'd be stupid not to use it. So I'm pretty, pretty big on it. And yeah, I'll, I'll work at that in the morning. I think um, just try and switch off tonight and then switch on tomorrow morning and go from there. Great. And um, yeah, I mean, you were talking about sort of bowling in partnership there with Shakib. Is that a bit of a, a team strategy going forward in terms of kind of bowling sort of in tandem with, with him tying down the opposition? Uh, he, he He's probably going to bowl a bit more in the power play. Um, so he'll bowl half his overs at least in the power play. Um, some games he might even bowl three. Um, we'll just see how it goes. But um, I think we're always trying to form partnerships, whoever we're bowling with. I think uh, that's the key part of 20 over cricket. If you can, you know, if you can stem two good overs together, which involves a partnership of some sort with whoever. So um, always looking at ways of trying to, you know, work together. If someone goes for some runs, you know that your job the next over is to try and pull it back. And if you need a wicket, you know, you've got to try and attack. So, yeah, I think there'd be partnerships across with all the bowlers. Indeed. And um, I mean, just one final point, I guess, from me, observation. I think the fact that you are a wrist spin, as you were sort of saying before, is not unusual, but there's not that many wrist spinners in Bangladesh. I mean, there's a plethora of left arm uh, kind of orthodox spinners. It's almost I wonder why. Like, I wonder why. It's, it's almost like there's a production line of them. Yeah, as you say, you've got Shakib, who is the number one sort of left armer out there. Um, and I think you've got Tyjo as well in your in your yeah. squad, who's another sort of left arm stalwart, more more so in the Red Bull game. Um, but yeah, there's a plethora of of kind of left arm orthodox finger spinners. But yeah, I think your variety of of left arm uh, wrist spin is is kind of a bit of a rarity in Bangladesh. So yeah, the fact that you are providing that point of difference, I think, is is really valuable to to the team. Yeah, no, definitely. I think that's obviously, you know, I'm I'm different. There's not many of us around, and and that's that's great. I've, I've noticed here already. Like players just seem a bit, you know, unnerved by it. They're not quite sure um, what to do. Really, they've not come across it much. So, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. I'm sure teams will be coming up with ways. They'd have seen me bowl now in a match, um, and you know. They'll be trying to do exactly what I do in terms of look at footage and find ways of, of scoring off me. And that's, you know, up to me then to try and counter that. Yeah. I mean, like you were saying, you, you know, you are different. Being different is good, I think. And, you know, you're you're absolutely proving that. And uh, yeah, actually, I think it's also a good thing for the, you know, for the local Bangladesh batsmen to come up against, you know, your your kind of variety of wrist spin. So, you know, hopefully it helps them to develop their their games going forward as well. Um, so let's let's move things on now and and kind of maybe just finish off 
by sort of focusing on you and your career, I mean, we, we haven't actually even sort of talked about your backstory because it's, it's quite a, you know, a unique one in terms of the path that you've taken to professional cricket. So, you know, I think it's quite well documented that you only took up uh, or, or you only got your first professional uh, contract, what sort of less than two years ago. Um, and, you know, sort of prior to that, you were involved in, in cricket on the coaching side in terms of sort of uh, coaching at college, college cricket, uh, schools cricket. Um, so, yeah, just just in terms of that sort of that background and, and where you are now, do you sometimes have to sort of pinch yourself to, to, to think that, you know, you've, you know, you've had a, a, a momentous what sort of two years now or, or even 12 months um does it is it kind of sunk in um it's yeah i, I think initially like i think the big thing the 100 was really difficult to process in terms of how quickly that happened and then since then i've you know i've really just been trying to look forward um i feel like well july july was when i finished my teaching in schools and coaching in schools so since july i've been full-time with my cricket and that's you know i've only been full-time with cricket for seven months now so it's quite exciting for me to be able to invest all my time in my cricket now so whether that be nutrition gym you know having time to prep food the night before and all this sort of stuff is just adding to to me the cricketer i guess and and yeah, I'm just looking forward really now. I'm trying not to look at what I've achieved already and, and, you know, I've achieved it and I'm proud of what I've achieved so far, but I'm pretty ambitious and, um, yeah, there's no reason why I can't have another year like I've had a year prior to this. And if I have another year like that, then you just don't know what's around the corner. So yeah, it's a really exciting time for me. Um, and yeah, like I said, just trying to make the most of every opportunity I get at the moment. Let's, yeah, I mean, let's just maybe take a moment to think about what might be around the corner. Like you say, you've had a, an astronomical kind of year or two. And, you know, if, if you continue on that path, I mean, are you thinking about sort of England recognition at this point in time? You know, there's, a, there's obviously a T20 World Cup coming up, actually not that far away if you look at it in, in terms of time. Um, England are obviously out in the Caribbean. You know they didn't do too well the other the other night against uh, the West Indies in that first T Twenty. I mean, is that kind of on your radar? I mean, I wouldn't. You know, it's got to be everyone's. I think if you're playing professional cricket in England, it's got to be unless you reach an age where actually you're content with with things and you just want to crack on and enjoy your county cricket or you've already played for England, etc., and done your time like. Yeah, it's definitely something I'd love to do. I believe I can do it. Um, I've sort of proven in big tournaments um, like the 100 and the Blast that I can can perform um, like like the players who are playing for England. So, yeah, I feel at the moment um, it seems quite tricky in terms of spinners to, to break into that side. Obviously, Adil Rashid's one of the best in the world and he... He has the, you know, he he's got his spot and he's not going to veer from that. I don't think because he's, you know, he's a brilliant bowler and you know it's great to see him doing so well. But yeah, maybe there'll be an opportunity for another wrist spinner within the squad. We'll see. Um, I know there's a few of us sort of on the fringes. Um, we'll just have to see. I, I mean, all I can do is work as hard as possible and um, give everything I can to try and achieve that. And you know, I think all I can do is perform and, and what will be will be. But, yeah, it's definitely an ambition. Um, yeah, it'd be an absolute dream. Indeed. And and like you say, if you keep doing what you've been doing, you know, you've, you've got every chance of uh, knocking on that England door. So, yeah, let's hope that that comes to fruition. Um, just before I let you go, and I will let you go, because I know, you know, as you said, you've got a game tomorrow morning and you do need to prep for it. You need to get a good night's sleep. Um, just before you go... Apparently, someone's, someone told me that you bought a guitar whilst you've been out in, in Dhaka. Is this true? Can you verify? Who's told you that? <laughs> I have my sources. No, so I, um, I have decided to take up guitar at the age of 28. Basically, um, long story short, my time I've got a lot more time on my hands now, um, and felt like that would be something that i'd really like to do 
Um, it's very different. I've obviously never, I've always sort of looked upon music as something I wouldn't want to do. And um, yeah, just suddenly got this urge to try and learn guitar. And my my cricket coach in England, like my long term, who's been worked with me since I was sort of 12, uh, actually plays in a, a band and he's a guitarist. So he's helping me. Um, he's helping me. He's giving me lessons. And I had my first one the day before I flew out here. So I brought it with me and I'm just trying to um, keep on top of things here and try and we're having an online lesson, I think, this week at some point. So, yeah, just I guess just trying to <laughs> learn a new skill, I guess. Brilliant. Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, yeah, I, I guess you've got a lot of downtime, like you say. So, yeah, it's, it sounds like a great yeah. hobby. I mean, I think, if you in the, in the big thing, like when we obviously you would have seen a lot in the press about bubbles and and you know the people who think that they're easy that they're so wrong they're very difficult and um i see a lot in the press about um the england team and the fact that when they complain about being in a bubble and the press get on top of them and it's just madness like it is very tough you can't do anything <laughs> you literally and what you often find is these hotels are because of covid they're not running as normal hotels either so there's not a lot to do at all so I've brought, you know, a number of things to try and keep me going. I've got my, my laptop, which I'm on now, which obviously I can use for stuff. I've got my PlayStation with me. I've got my guitar. Um, I'm writing a blog, uh, which is going out on the Warwickshire website, I think, today, or, which should be quite a good insight into how things have gone so far. And, yeah, just trying to keep busy, really. I think that's – it's not very nice. You're sort of cooped up in a hotel and can't do a lot. So I'm trying to be as productive as possible. We've obviously got access to a gym and a pool and so i'm working hard at my fitness in between games and um yeah just trying to get better i guess brilliant yeah no it sounds like you've got you got you know all that all those hobbies kind of really well well covered i mean just just the last question in terms of a tune is it have you got a go-to tune maybe after the end of a, a hard game is there is there something that you try no 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 i'm literally i've never played guitar so i am still learning like where to put put my hands on the guitar like it's very basic but and people are probably going to laugh at this obviously but um i just wanted to learn and i want to be my long-term goal is to be able to get my guitar out at the end of a game after a win and play a few songs and get the dressing room going so that's sort of the long-term goal and we'll, we'll see how far we get with it absolutely i mean when you get to that point is would there be a go-to song uh i haven't even given it much thought to be honest <laughs> i'm just you know trying to learn the basics at the moment and then you know maybe i'll get to a point where i can take requests oh well i'm sure i'm sure that will happen in all in good time but uh yeah no jake it's been it's been brilliant brilliant talking to you thank you uh for your time all the insights into into what's happening in the bpl it's it's been fantastic and uh yeah go well for the rest of the tournament Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Brilliant. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching this edition of the Sight Screen Cricket Journal podcast. As ever, if you like what I do, then uh, do subscribe on YouTube. Take a look at the, uh, the website as well. And do follow me on Twitter. Until next time, goodbye.